Hey guys, it's Mark and Tanya, and today we're installing the seat swivels in the van. So we decided to go with the Scopema seat swivels. We got these from the swivel shop in Oregon and they were awesome to work with. Um, these are really highly rated, but they are probably the most expensive ones out there. There's a lot, a lot of good ones I've seen. They look like they all work really well. We got to use these when we rented a happy camper in Iceland and it worked out really well for us. Super easy to use. Plus they go through some kind of safety certification uh, through some kind of European standard, which is sort of like our underwriters lab. So we know there's some safety built into it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to install the passenger seat first. We've got the driver's one back there still in the box. We're going to leave it in there until we know this one works and then we'll break that out and uh, do that one as well. So let's get started. All right, so you actually don't need much to do this job. Most of these uh, nuts are uh, T uh, Torx 40. So we've got a um, socket with a Torx 40 adapter. We've got a drill with another Torx 40 adapter. Uh, it comes with a couple different things. So it comes with obviously the sweet seat swivel and uh, then it comes with spacers. These are only needed on the Ram ProMaster and I heard actually you don't need these. There's a little piece of the seat belt adapter underneath that if you cut that loose you can actually install without these. So we'll look at that later but I think we're going to try with them and if it ends up being too high we'll just take it out and cut that seat belt adapter and go ahead and put it back in. There's a bunch of links online for how to how to do that also comes with a couple sets of screws long and short uh, the long ones go in the bottom between the swivel and the base the short ones go between the uh, swivel and the seat so that's all we need one thing we are going to do a little safety mechanism is we're going to pull the negative battery cable away so that's going to pull any power away from the airbags because we're going to be messing with the seats i don't know we don't know if anything sets that off so um, everything we've seen recommends pull the negative battery cable, let it sit for 10 minutes to discharge any kind of power that's somewhere or any kind of voltage that's built up somewhere, and then go ahead with the install. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So if you look at the back of the seat, um, once you install the seat, the swivel, the swivel actually goes in here. So you'll basically pull this out and the swivel goes in between these two points and apparently once it's in it's just this piece of metal right here that gets in the way and that's why you need the spacer so if you have something to cut that piece away with and I think you also need to get rid of the bottom of this uh, plastic plate over here you can actually install those seat swivels without the spacers. So the first step is to remove the floor covering to have access to the van battery so we use coins to unscrew the plastic bolts here and then remove the cover. So now we're going to disconnect the negative terminal to make sure that there's no power that goes to the airbags when we are installing this uh, seat swivel. So in order to do that you're going to push this lever out to release and then you're going to wiggle this to take this off and we just store it away stow it away and then we're going to leave it like this for about 10 minutes and then that way we can make sure that there's no no charge or power that's going to any anything in the van so if we want to get started the first thing you've got to do is get rid of this thing this thing holds like battery cables and stuff like that this pulls out through the front and we can just get rid of it one thing you'll notice the big instruction booklet that they send with you? No, there's no instructions at all, not even a page. I think you can go onto their website and download the instructions. They're all in French, so have fun. Hopefully you know how to speak French. I don't, so we're just going to have at it. So we've gotten rid of that piece. The next thing to do is to start removing some of these bolts. So these are, again, Torx 40 bolts. So we will We'll use our screwdriver to pull them out. You might need, might need an impact driver for this. Obviously the seat is pulled all the way forward for this. Bolts are out. Now what we'll do is we'll move the seat all the way back and we'll lift out the last two bolts.
Now these, this doesn't work for that because it fits a little bit tighter. So that's why we need this. Okay, so now that we have taken all the bolts out, the six bolts out, what we've got to do is disconnect some of these wires. So you're going to find three sets of wires under here. There is an orange one, there is a yellow, and um, there is a black. So these things are kind of zip tied down here. So we're going to have to pull these out and then we're going to have to separate them. So there is a little connector that is impossible to see from here that is used to disconnect the wires. Let's see how to do this. All right, so these are loose and there is a little purple, hopefully you can see that, a little purple connector in there which basically releases the two halves so we pull that out and wish I could get my hands in here. There's another thing that looks much easier in all the videos until you try to do it yourself. All right, that one's loose. Again, pull the purple connect the purple lock. That one comes loose. And all that's left is this one. This is probably the one that if you touch the wrong way, the airbag explodes on you. So, just kidding. Uh, all right. So. Oh, so, this one actually disconnects from here. I actually thought it disconnected from back here, but it's actually disconnected from here. So, all three of those are actually our zip, ours weren't zip tied at all. The zip ties are completely loose. So, these are free. All right, so we can now, at this point, take the seat off. Okay, so far so good. All right, the next thing we've got to do is put the base on. So, not really hard to see where this goes. Uh, three screws there, three screws here. This is funny in our van in Iceland this was actually on the inside uh, but here it's on the outside okay long screws are the ones that go in first So it looks like the bolts that come with the scope of my seat are five millimeters. Um, that seems to fit perfectly here. I thought these were actually Torx bits, but they're not. So Torx screws, but they're not. So okay. So one little change of plans. Using this it sucks. So I went to the store and I found a what is this? not metric so it's a little smaller than it needs to be but I think it'll work to tighten all these bolts that'll make life a lot easier so we're gonna try it much better so the spacers are basically um, they're gonna sit right here and the purpose of the spacer is to keep this piece from hitting the base when it spins or, or hitting the uh, the other part of the swivel when it spins. So from what I understand, you could just cut this little piece off right up here. So basically cut, cut it as short as this black piece behind it and it will clear the seat. I think also you have to um, cut the bottom of this plastic piece off, but I don't think that's too much of a problem. So I'm debating, I can either do that or I can use the spacers. The spacers, the problem is, man, they seem to add a lot of height. Um, so let me see how I can cut this. There's probably a better way of doing, there's probably a better way of doing this than with an old hacksaw, but 
It's working. It's just taking forever. Well, it's off. Took about half hour of sawing, and then I just started to bend it, and it finally broke off. So you see, this is where it was. And it is now off. So the next step, now that we've cut this piece, is to get this on top of the swivel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these wires, and I know they're gonna cause me problems, so I'm gonna stuff them in here to hold them. And then I will lift the seat and guide these through the hole, line it up, and start um, screwing it down. Now these, just so you know, these, these rails, the, um, these move independently. So what I've done is I pushed this bar up to loosen the rails, and I've pushed both rails all the way back so that'll expose the back two screws so once I put it on I can put these two back screws on and then I can move it back and get the forward ones okay so I have the seat back on top of the swivel and I've lined up the four back holes two there and two there we're gonna screw them in and then pull it back and move to the front screws So after a bunch of frustration, um, this is screwed back in. To be honest, I'm not really sure where that metal piece would have hit if I didn't take it off, but it seems like it certainly could catch the swivel at some point. So it's attached. I've gone ahead and run the wires back through the hole. I'm going to reattach the plastic plate and see if that hits anywhere and see if that needs to come off. So the seat is back together and it does spin. Um, it doesn't spin so well when you put weight on it. It seems that this post right here, which I believe is what it locks into, when I spin it around and I'm actually sitting on it, it catches um, the swivel. And you can see it's already get, starting to get scratched up. So it's definitely hitting the swivel. I don't know if that's a problem or not. You see, even when I even when I use my hand, just put some weight on it, you can see that it's scratching. Um, the other problem, and this could be an issue, I saw a reference online to some washers that were needed. When you didn't use the spacers, you needed some washers. And I wasn't sure what that was all about, but now when I look here, it's hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom in. So this middle post here is part of the swivel adapt swivel um, adapter and that passes through a hole it passes through that middle where are we going it passes through that middle hole in the um, spacer but when you're not using the spacer it's just sort of sitting there so that I can't really tighten the other two screws around it so it's flat here on this end you notice there's no space here it's really hard to see that I'm sorry it's hard to see but there's two plates are together here but here there is some space between them so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this I'm gonna take the seat off again and I'm gonna put the washers in here to account for that space I'll also put them there so that the seat is sitting flush on the entire adapter and I'll see if that helps it uh, spin a little better I went to Home Depot and bought how many of these? Six, twelve of these things. I don't know what they're what size they are, but they're labeled ABB. And I went ahead, I uninstalled the, the seat and I stuck them here, here, and in the front. So now it's it sits uh, flat and it doesn't bind up on that little post under the seat. That little metal post there also I took that metal I'm sorry I took the plastic piece and I cut the bottom of it off 
so that now I can put it here and the seat should swivel properly. The seat is actually in and it is spinning and not hitting anything. I did have to cut the bottom of this off like I showed you and that saved me probably most of this. A little bit was taken up with washers but it saved me most of that width in the height of the seat. So now I'm going to I'm actually going to go back to the store and get a something to wrap around these so it doesn't bind in that hole and then I'll go ahead and reattach these. Some kind of little um, flexible conduit and then I will get to that seat. To make it a little more clear what's got to be done I figured I'd show you on the driver's seat which is off. So this is the piece right here that needs to be cut. So basically if we cut right around there and remove this bottom piece that takes care of the one obstruction. The other thing is this post right here. So uh, if you use the spacer, this will go into one of the holes of the spacer. If you don't use the spacer, you've got to use a couple of washers. You can't see that. You've got to use a couple of washers that are at least that height. Where is that? There it is. You've got to use a couple of washers or at least the height of that post and they will go on top of the screws. So you'll actually need um, one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll actually need 12 of these washers. I use the ABB from Home Depot and it seems to work. So two of those stacked together on each screw will clear the height of this post. You don't have a post here, but you obviously need this, the washers to make it all level. So that's the two things that have to be done to modify. There's actually three. Three things have to be done to modify this so that you don't have to use those spacers. One is the washers two is cutting this piece off and three is trimming the bottom off of this plate which you can easily do with a hacksaw or a coping saw it's actually pretty easy so both swivels are in so now the last thing I'm gonna do is I went and bought this split uh, tubing the split conduit I guess you'd call it from the store I'm going to wrap these wires in it because I don't want them to pinch in the hole when it's turning. I will zip tie them up. I'll reconnect the connectors and then I will get to the battery. Well, the seats are installed and the last thing to do is to connect the battery. Okay, the battery is reconnected. Our swivel seats <laughs> are done. <laughs> Yay! So something to keep in mind, we didn't use the spacer bars that came in the box, and I think that's probably good because Tanya is 5'3", mm -hmm. and the seat height is okay now, but I think if it was just a little bit higher, I think it would have been a problem. Huh? Would have been uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. So I think it was worth it that we did it this way. Put a little bit extra work, but it was worth it. So I hope you got something out of this video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to follow along on our van build process. And if you click the little notification bell, you'll find out every time we release a new video. Also, don't forget to hit the like or thumbs up. And please leave us a comment because we'd love to hear from you. So thanks again, and we will see you soon. Bye.